Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everyone to Jelab TV. I am Jelab and this is Football Manager 2021, the Youth Academy Challenge with Siena. And look at all this money. If you like this kind of video, be sure to like and share this video and to subscribe to the channel. It really does help me a lot. But yes, we've got so much money right now. It's actually making my eyes water and tears. Oh, so happy with this. So, so happy. We're actually going to make a lot of money this year. We've already got 1.5 million in TV revenue, which is starting. And then you look at this and realize that we've already made 5 million this season in TV revenue in Serie A. We've not even played a single game in Serie A yet. And it's quite starting just how much TV revenue can change a club's fortunes. We've already made 1.3 million in season tickets as well, which compared to last season just being 1 million is very promising indeed. But actually, that was last month. So correction. We've already made 1 million more this season in season tickets than we did the entirety of last season, which for me is another good sign. Sponsorship income, we've also made a bit more than last year, which should also go up after this season's ended. And yeah, TV, prize money, 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 money. We've got so much goddamn money. Only issue is we are predicted to be relegated straight away. And I say that not really liking the idea that we could be going down straight away. Because, well, we're not exactly the best team in the world. It's supposed to be bottom of the table quite comfortably. I've just realised Marcus Rashford is actually at Roma and is now gone on loan to Malaga. He's 35 years of age now. Wow, I was not prepared for that. And he also found his way to Juventus briefly as well. So he joined for 6.5 million, then was literally playing in the Liga. Wow, okay. That is a fall from grace I was not expecting to see, but okay. I was thinking he'd be... Staying at United all his career, but apparently not. Two years on loan at Juventus, they buy him, and then they literally just dump him into the third tier of Italian football. Still, though, we are expected to finish bottom of the table. We're not going to do well. I'm not expecting that. However, the goal really is to get to 30 points, and the reason I want 30 points is, well, let's just say last year, 30 points got 18th, and yeah, we wanted to avoid being, being bottom this season, and... We need to get 40 points if you want to survive. I don't think we're going to get 40 points, quite frankly. It is just unrealistic, though. 30 points would have kept us up if we were in this division. Wow, that is a very bad season. And that season... Well, that's actually two times that 30 points would have been enough to keep you up. But, yeah, three times, actually. There's been some really bad seasons in terms of points totals, hasn't there? But either way, 40 points is the aim if you want to survive. I don't think we're going to survive. But also, I'm looking at the rules... If we get relegated, we get 2.4 million, and that's more money. And if it's just survive and don't finish in the top seven, we get 9.34 million. So more money for us. I would like to survive. I don't think we will survive, but it is one of those things we're not expected to do well at all. The reason I say that is, well, the only thing we're good at in every position is our work rate, and that is very concerning. We also know who is the best and who's the worst. Barry are the worst with their work rate. We're the second worst or second best in strength. We are only 0.5 ahead of Sotorel, who, and yeah, average is 11.32. Passing with the worst. First touch with the worst. Decisions with the, sec with the third worst. Team up with the third worst as well, but we're not that bad compared to some teams. Leadership with the second worst, only just ahead of Sotorel. And aggression with the fourth worst. Goalkeeping wise, our kicking is terrible. Our reflexes are not too bad. They're not brilliant, mind you, but they're not terrible. Handling with the best in the league, surprisingly. And yet, I'm struck by the fact that Milan are the worst, but this is also average for team and for players. Every reach with one of the worst, but we're not even the. It's not even that bad, really, and look at it, compared to Barry, at least. Command of every, actually, in the top half, which is very, very nice, to say the least. Uh, one on ones, we are not the worst, but we're the fourth worst. And throwing, we're actually the 12th best, which is surprising, to say the least. And we're the top half for agility, which, again, just throws me off. The fact Juventus have the worst agility in the goalkeepers is very surprising to me. Defending, ha ha! Second worst tackling, second worst in heading, fourth worst in jumping reach, fourth worst in marking, ninth best in positioning. The only thing we do right, worst in strength, worst in pace, and worst in acceleration. We are going to be absolutely destroyed, I think, defensively. 
But it's not as bad as the midfield because ha 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 ha, this is going to be bad. This is going to be really, really bad. Fasting, we are the worst. Long shots, we are the worst. Vision, we are the worst. Stamina, we are also the worst. Teamwork, the second worst. Tackling, the worst. Technique, the worst. And decisions, the worst. That is out of all my midfielders, by the way. Midfield, wow, that is a very bad sign indeed. Striking wise, it's not as grim, but it's still pretty grim. Third worst in finishing, third worst in long shots, ninth best in heading, surprisingly, and seventh best in jumping reach. This is strikers, by the way. Second worst in anticipation, and that surprises me that how much better we are than sub to rail. Second worst in off the ball, worst in pace, worst in celebration. So we're pretty slow, which is not good if you want to survive in a team division like Severe R. That being said, though, we have also made some signings in the backroom staff because I decided, you know what, we're going to get as many people in as possible to help our coaching team. So when we have the money for next season, when we go down, we at least got something to work with and to improve the players, right? So, yes, I got very, very busy. We got the physio before the end of the last video. I decided to get more people in before the transfer window started. And we got Mikel... Rasako as our under 20s performance analysis, he's not the best, but honestly, with our reputation, we can't really get the best right now. So once we get become a better team in reputation, we can get more people in. This guy's okay for now, not brilliant, but he's still better than average, which I think is nice. I mean, he's just average, honestly, but there you go. But then we managed to get Jordi Calvo as a performance analysis in the main team, and not only is he better than average, but he also brings some knowledge of Nigeria of all places, which I wasn't expecting from a Spaniard, but okay. Not the worst thing in the world, and yeah, it gives us more knowledge, and I'm happy with more knowledge and a good performance analysis. We just need to get more people in. So then I brought Paul Green in as a coach. Now, he is very much someone who's got knowledge of England and Scotland. We seem to bring in a lot of people who have knowledge of Scotland and England for some reason. It's almost as if I have the knowledge to back up my desire, but yeah. His coaching is very, very good, and I'm very happy we brought him in. He's only been paid 500 a week, which makes it even better. It's a one-year deal, so if we need to get rid of him, we can get rid of him. I don't, I don't want to get rid of him, but we, at least we've got that security. We then also brought in this under-18s coach in Adelaide Hurt. I'm not saying that correctly, but I don't care. I'm just going to say that's how he is. And yeah, he is someone that has is very well-rounded. Isn't the best, though, and I don't think he's going to get better, but it's just more... We bring in people to build in the to lighten the look the workload to say the least, and that's a good sign as far as I'm concerned. Mercy personality could be a bit of annoyance actually, but it's still better than nothing. Oh, also we lost Eddie Gunnaho as uh I think under 18s coach to Strasbourg's second team as their manager, so that's something. He isn't the worst, but it wasn't the best either. So I was not honestly not too concerned about him leaving. So take that as you will. So I also brought this guy in, and this guy actually is going to be familiar to some of you because he's a former player. Yes, someone who literally came for my youth intake once upon a time, retired, and I was looking at my former intakes and thought, oh, where are they now? And I realised, wait, this guy's a coach, and he's retired. What? I've got to bring him in when I get the chance. So when the opportunity came to I can bring this guy in as an under scenes coach, I thought, we're going to take advantage of this because, well... How often do you get to sign one of your former players who's actually played for you on the pitch as a coach? Not very often. This guy is working for us now and I'm very excited to see how he can develop as a coach because he's only got a natural B license. Once he gets all the other coaches, he'll be very, very good indeed. Speaking of one former player, here's another former player. Marco Soto is back in our coaching ranks. He left us to become a manager who's actually the under-18s assistant once upon a time. He's now the under-20s coach. I'm very happy to have him back. He's very decent. I was actually honestly considering at one point to making him my assistant manager uh, a few years ago, but then I didn't because I didn't feel like I needed another assistant manager. So take that as you will. But yeah, under 20s coach, happy to welcome back one of our former players. Also brings us Argentina knowledge. So I'm happy with that. Speaking of bringing knowledge of the world, is Tamuro Katsbaya, and this guy is a pretty decent scout. Isn't the best. He's got perfectionist personality, so I would love him if he was a head of youth development, but he's not. He's never going to be a coach. Oh, he could be technically, but I'm not going to use him as that because it'll be silly. But he's a scout for us. He has knowledge of Georgia, Cyprus, and Ukraine, which for me is very, very useful and could be very good to give us more knowledge. 
if we decided to go for that route. So yeah, scout with good knowledge. Very happy with that indeed. Also a former international footballer, so even better. Under 20s physio, Jamie Croswell, 20 physio, Tremor under 18s physio once upon a time. Makes sense to bring him in, quite frankly. Same could be said for our new under 18s physio, Sam McGregor. He is a 20 rated physio and he was at Oldham's under 18s. Made sense to bring him in as well. We also brought in a new fitness coach, Roman Frey, who replaced one of our former fitness coaches who was never really good. I'm just going to pair him and show you why I decided to get rid of the guy that we got rid of. So yeah, this is the guy that we replaced with Roman Frey, and you can see why I made the replacement, quite frankly. He's a much better fitness coach. Even in the weakest areas, he's better. So we were stupid not to bring this guy in, and we, he was, he's just a light-for-light -light replacement and much better. He's three years old as yes, but he's also a much better fitness coach. So whether Anthony Hostelio can get another role, I don't know, but not my problem. We also brought this guy in under 18's performance analysis in Demiano Cristellini. He is not the best, but he's under 18's and honestly, I'm never going to get anyone who's amazing in this role as of this moment in time, especially with the fact that we are only a two and a half star reputation team, so makes sense. So the last person we brought in as a scout was Jihu Chiapas. Wasn't brought in for his ability per se, but more for his knowledge. Mexico, Spain, United States, Argentina, Chile, Colombia, Paraguay, Guatemala, Costa Rica, Brazil, Ecuador, Peru, Uruguay. I mean, when you've got a scout that has this much knowledge and you can get in for just 700 a week, I'm sorry, you're a fool to pass it up. This guy going to bring us so much knowledge, it's unbelievable. And we're also amazed on one more thing because, well, I might have got a new feeder team as well. I say feeder team. Another affiliate, to say the least. Tabo Sesena is our new feeder team. And this team is from Slovenia. I thought we can get some knowledge as well. And maybe get some new intakes from this team in the future, potentially. I don't know. I was thinking, yeah, we can get some new feeder teams and new players come from their intakes or something like that. Didn't really work that way. But we can also loan players to this club. So that's nice. We could also buy their players first, but we're never going to do that because, well, let's be honest, this chance prevents me from doing that anyway, and I don't even know if they are any good players. Do they have good players? He's not the best, is he? Let's be honest. And neither is this guy. So yeah, never going to be good enough to really get in our team. So it was just a more, they have knowledge, I want Slovenian knowledge. So can we get intakes for that? Who knows? Be nice if we could, though. But yeah, we've now got 17% world knowledge, and that is very, very promising to say the least. We're looking to expand our knowledge of the world, because if it means that we can get better intakes or better players from all around the world, then that's great, right? We know 17% of the world, which is already promising, and the fact that some of our coaches have not fully immersed their knowledge into this yet means that there's still more to come, because some of them literally just signed the other day. Like, how, when did you sign for me? When did you sign... We literally just signed him three days ago, so his knowledge is not going to come through anytime soon. But yeah, three days ago, we've already got this much knowledge coming in from this guy, and for me, that is a good sign that we can get more knowledge. Once all of his knowledge is really pushed into this, then we can have absolutely so much knowledge come through. Marcus Atura has got full knowledge of Argentina. The fact that it's not all gone through yet is saying a lot. So a lot of people coming through, a lot of knowledge is going to come through, and I'm very excited to see what we can do with this, quite frankly. Even if some of the knowledge is still... Have it, you got all knowledge of Brazil and yet your still knowledge has not come in. So yeah, Techno Director as well. The fact his knowledge of Brazil has not all gone in yet tells you that it takes time for all the knowledge to integrate itself into the system. So don't be surprised if you don't have all the knowledge straight away when you're bringing on these people. Also, we've got two more coaches potentially coming in. Andy Crabtree is coming in. I just want the knowledge. I want the more coaches to come in. I literally asked the board for more coaches and they said yes so i was very happy indeed with that same with sean barker or baker and yeah sean barker is just very good very good coach and it made sense to bring him in whether he'll come to us or not i don't know but he was the former quality town manager so we're bringing in some former managers into our team and it's very very useful to say the least we've also convinced our board to not only improve the youth recruitment, we did that a while back. Also improved the junior coaching. We're now convinced them to improve the youth facilities. And to, well, they actually wanted to improve the recruitment analysis rages. And they gave me a new contract as well. So I'm here for another four seasons, which is very, very good. And it's very promising to say the least. The club owner does not want to relinquish control of the club at their record. Makes sense. We're doing very good. We've also got a game, first and foremost, to talk about in the Copa Italia. It's this game and then it's the VR game. This might be a long-ass video, but I 
I'm not caring. I just wanted to show off a lot of stuff we've been doing. They want us to go for 4 2 3 1 because of um, Fantosi, Conte, and Talia not being used properly. We're just going to see what happens because I think there's a lot of things we can do here. And for me, this is very, very promising. We're going to try this again. Whether or not this works, I don't know. Also, Jack Oliver is considered a non EU player because he's English. Yes, English is still considered non EU, but he's gone out 267 days. So, hopefully, my next season, he'll be considered a no longer a non EU because he'll have the Italian nationality. Who knows? It'd be nice if he could, though. It'd be very, very nice. What we're going to do, though, is see where we can go from here. We've got a lot of good talent that I'm very excited about, and I just want to see where we can go. We're expected to be terrible in this league, which is fine. Basta League is also on the bench, so this guy looks good now. And if we compare him to Tortilli, who, was, who is the main goalkeeper, he isn't the world apart, but he's better in some other areas. So Basta League is the better in the physical side of things, but Tortilli is the better in the mentals and the goalkeeping side of things. So... It's a bit of a, it's a world apart for these goalkeepers, so who knows what's going to happen. At least I've got two very strong options on the bench if I needed to, and if we need to send one of them out on loan to get more experience to be good enough for the two we are in the future, then I had that option. But either way, we're going to do over this team. Well, Tilly, Fantosi is suspended. Scopato's injured again. He's done for. I'm not going to play him ever again, honestly. And that's not being me being rude, it's me being polite. Uh, and so we're going to try and play him as a defense midfielder on a deep line playmaker on support. He's never going to get much game time otherwise, but yeah, we're going to try this formation, see if this works. We're going to take on Catroni, and we're going to see if we can get a win here. It'd be nice if we could, but it wouldn't be the end of the world if we don't get a win. I say that, I want to be Catroni for revenge, but either way, let's see how we do against a team that we got beaten by twice in the league last season. I'm concerned... That my formation I've gone with is not going to work. And look at this. Wow, they've actually carved us to pieces. That is annoying. We're losing to Catroni again. Ah, this is this is not good. It was either Catroni or Vicenza. And Vicenza beat us last time. But this is not good either. Wow, 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 wow. We are already 1-0 down against a team that's in the division below us. That is not a good sign for us. TBRC with the throw. It's not the best throw. We don't know what we're doing do we Pellegrino with the ball across the Barbini who's inside yes he finds Lenzi he can go for goal and he has done that's one all so they're leading last long I'm still breaking the team anyway because well let's be honest we've been absolutely woeful so far and for me the fact we are not further ahead and the fact we had to come from behind to get this is still frustrating it's a very good run because it's so much space to Lenzi inside inverted wingbacks are taking one defenders away from the defensive wingers, it's very, very useful. But still, one all. Alright, that's a bit annoying to say the least. They got a chance for this free kick now. We've headed the ball away. I'm so concerned that we're not really proving ourselves to be a decent team at all. Santelles now. And that's really well worked. It's a very good goal. I fears we weren't going to be at our best. And this is just filled me with dread. Because against the bigger teams, we're not that great. Against the smaller teams, we're probably better. And we are the smallest team in the Serie A. If we're doing this badly against Cotone, imagine how bad we're going to do in Serie A. Not being my best, not being my smartest either. I tried, I waited too long to do things. But Bini with the throw, finds for Gaza. Oh, never mind, we've got any closer. Apparently, it was not too late to change things up. So, yeah, we've been absolutely terrible. But then we just have moments like this where we can just get things out of the blue. And it's so weird to me. It really is. As I decide to ease my beating off tackles. Because, you know, he's been booked. And it is extra time. Okay. Extra time. Renzotto. Oh, dear. I don't know who that was that made a tackle. But it's 3-2. We've been very questionable defensively at times. We're tired now. But again, we've been very questionable the set of these and we've got too many bookings so we got us on our feet so let's do that yeah we didn't we just dived in and gave him too much time and space in the box as well so question marks of our defending really they've been a bad team there's no question about it they've been a bad team we've not been good enough and we're going to be knocked out of the Coppa Italia in the third qualifying round for the third year running so there you go out already to our team knocked out so early on oh well could be worse I suppose all right, Crabtree and Barker have both signed, so very good signings for us at the moment, and good coaches as far as we're concerned. 
So the first game of the season has been played and we can now look at the amount of money we're spending and we're spending 4 million a year on our players wages compared to the 247 million spent by Juventus so yeah at least we know financially we'll be very good for a while we should hopefully 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 in the near future be very rich if given the chance to do that either way though this could be a challenge and a half I'd like to think in fact, if we compare ourselves to the division below us, we'd actually still be in the bottom half of wages as well in Serie B. So, kind of tells you a very, very stark picture, doesn't it? Yeah, that's 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 something else. How much are you getting? How much money is Spurs? They got 24 million, so they are okay. Uh, secure with 24 million, but not rich. Good to know. So, here we are facing our first ever Serie A opponent in Parma. A team that is actually... Not really the best in the world, but they're still a bit of the division third team, so they're decent opposition for a first opponent. And quite frankly, they'll be difficult either way because of the fact that they can do a lot of damage to us. They've got their manager's been there for quite a while too, so this is gonna be a very difficult game just because, well, they're good and they've been established in the city are for a long while now. So how well we'll do, I don't know. They want us to go for balance. And to hit crosses early. I think, yes, we can do that. That makes more sense thinking about it. So I've made a tinker to my tactic. And this is what I'm going for. I've gone for this formation. With a 4 2 3 one. It's not, well, it's very bland in some eyes. But in other eyes, I'm, I'm just going to go and hope for the best. We've actually gone for some personalized instructions as well. Just because I think it could work. And honestly, I would be very interested to see how this works out. But we're going to try and make the players dribble more and sit narrower in the fullback position, the wingback positions. It may work, it may not work. I don't know. We're going to also go for the same with uh, the inverted wingers. Maybe take more risk and sit narrower. But again, actually I might take off the pass shorter thing just because I don't think it might work. We're going to see what happens. We're literally going for the same structures with the shadow striker as I was using beforehand. And the pressing forward, we're not going to change anything of him. We're just going to tackle harder with Conte, the deep line playmaker. Tackle harder and top Michael, the ball, the box, the box midfielder. And we're going to pass it shorter, but shoot less with the centre backs, I think. That being said, yeah, we're going to see what happens here. We don't know what will happen. I say hit early crosses below. Let's mix that up a little bit because Oliver is not exactly a short pair. He's a target man as well. So let's see what we can do with this. This could go very badly, or it can go very well. We don't know. It's Palmer. We're going for a positive approach. It's literally a tactic I decided to just make up and hope for the best, really. So let's see how we do. After the controlling game, kind of maybe a bit terrified, honestly. Here we go. Lenzi on the ball. And we are going to... Oh, that's not the best ball, is it? I was hoping he wouldn't do that, but here's Collie on the ball. The tackle was a bit questionable and that's the flex is also tilly a bit fortunate but that's the first half of the game and lupo now in the middle collie scores it's one nil to palmer we knew it was gonna be difficult we knew this was gonna be difficult and it's a very good goal from palmer casio so it's a little disappointing that we've considered this early in the game i say this early it took 31 minutes but they are one of the established teams in this division at this point and we don't know what to expect anymore it's gonna be difficult we've got a chance now Cody plays it forward we're not even winning the aerial battles which I knew was a difficult situation but there we go and I just I'm scared for the future we're gonna be relegated this year I'm almost certain of it I've literally got no hope that we're gonna survive but again we need to at least try, right, and do something productive with this, as we can see the second goal. Well, this is disappointing. Uh, let's tinker with this. We're not going to play our defence. We're not going to hit the ball, cross the ball early. We're going to pass into space. We are not going to force them out wide, because it's not working. We're not going to do the offside trap. I don't know why I did that. We're not going to do high engage and high defensive line. We're going to sit deep, I think, is what we're going to do. We're going to sit deep. We've got to go for a, cautious, a countless approach. We are going to go direct. We're not going to work the ball in the box. We're going to pass into space. I think hitting the crosses early could be a good call. 
We're going to play for set pieces. We're also going to run at the fence. We're not going to do that either, actually. I think higher tempo is not the way to go. We're not... I think this would be the cult full, but is good. We're going to regroup, actually, and hold the shape. I think it's what we wanted to be doing now. We should have done this earlier, really. I don't know why I didn't think of this, but there we go. We're going to roll it out as well. But we're not going to go high line engagement. We're going to press less. We're going to try and make... We're not going to do time marking either. So we're also going to force the opposition inside. So when they come to us, they've got to do stuff with that. I should have think for this earlier, but again, I didn't think this far ahead. So there you go. Uh, we're two new up, we're two new down, and we've got to try something. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but it may work. It may not work. And Serpy on the ball, Fofana on the ball now, Bondi on the ball now. What can we do with this situation? I don't know what's going to happen, but we're going to find a Bertie who's not the best left back in the world, and we had a chance, and Bazzoni puts it wide. Okay, we've had chances. That's already more than I was expecting. Okay, so they have got something here. There's a throw for them. And Brizzy will try something. Cody on the ball now. And that is just really well worked. We just didn't do ourselves justice here. Okay, so they got an opportunity potentially now. And Asensio, Lupo. We just... I'm just trying to think of so much in this game. It's ridiculous. I've never really tinkered as much as I have today. And that's what we know how difficult this is going to be for us right now, just to even get anything out of this. This has been a difficult game to sell of these, but Oliver finds for Fana, we're literally trying to do something different. But I've never really tried before. For Fantosi on the ball, we've literally gone for wingers now instead of inside forwards. Bonnie's playing on the right-hand side. It's it's better roll. And Oliver scores! We have a goal! Can you believe it? We've scored in this we are. Oliver's done himself justice. Bondi's got a goal. And it feels like the change we've made has worked, which is very promising to say the least. Also means we're not going to be the worst defence and the worst attack in the league right now, which is also very promising. Here we go, Bondi again on the ball. Finds Bazzoni. We feel like we're doing better since we've gone from change. It means it changes. And there we go. And it's a free kick to them. This could go very badly. They score this free kick later on. I like it if we can get a counter-attack after this. But they've scored. All right. Uh, Keeper did not do himself justice here. We, at least we've got two goalkeepers we can work on and bring in if we needed to. But they're playing with more caution as well. We're trying to go cautious. We got a goal, at least. So we've not been completely shut out. But it's not a good sign when we're losing this badly to Palmer, who are one of the weaker teams in the division. It also tells me that this is going to be a very difficult this se season for us. But we did decently well. Oliver shows he can score in this division, at least. So maybe... I should just be grateful we've done something productive, I suppose. But yeah, one not defeat. We didn't do as bad as fear in which to send a lot, but sub to ill. Have managed to be to Suela 2 0. What an annoying situation to be in. That is actually very frustrating that no, that Suelo can be beaten by sub to ill of all teams. But okay. We might be bottom of the table, but it's better than nothing, I suppose. We're not bottom, bottom yet, as Hellas Verona beat Barry by two goals to nil. But yeah, we've got a two week break until the Genoa game anyway, and then we've got Lazio, then into the Fiorentina. So it's not an easy run of games but then you got Fresnone and Sassuolo afterwards before Atalanta, Bologna and Sabtuel so it's going to be difficult to say the least for how this is going to go. I want to hope we can get something out of this but I'm not expecting the greatest things. We're going to have to work on a lot of different things to really see how well we can do but maybe I just need to go very very defensive and hope for the absolute best because this is not a good sign so far when we can be ripped to pieces like we've just been. We're just going to go for a brand new look formation and just do something different you know. Maybe we just go for, I don't know, for this sort of formation, these diff formations. I don't think an anchor man is going to work for us, but I, I really feel like we need to go for a more direct football route run game because it's not going to work otherwise, I feel, which is a bit frustrating, but what can you do? Either way, though, we are going to end this here. I hope you guys have actually enjoyed yourselves. Hope you guys like and share this video and that you will subscribe to my channel. It really does help me a lot. But anyway... And until next time, goodbye and well, good night.